such a beautiful early July evening out of Big Valley. The sun's kind of going down behind the hill. Smoking some of Ahmad's uh, cigar blend vapor flake. It's great. It's perfect. It's cherry season. Washington State cherries. So, what I'll do is I'll have a cherry. Have a little tobacco. It's kind of like a a good cherry aromatic, but better. Better because it's not that kind of glompy fake cherry, but uh, good quality tobacco with real cherries. <laughs> so, I was reading a little opinion piece in the newspaper uh, this weekend about how here in the United States uh, owning a home is often considered the way to build wealth. So, and the guy who was writing it had had several homes and he was contesting that idea. So, and he made some good points. You know, it all depends on what your goals are. If you have a lot of expenses, like you need to put kids through college, uh, maybe run a business, um, maybe put your money into investments. You know, the stock market has had a great run. Who would have thought? I know the prediction was when uh, when Trump came into office that, you know, the stock market would crash, and, you know. So there's still a lot of that. Certainly the longest run, I think, in history now of a bull market. So Yeah, it was just so good. Hmm. So this is a, a not-so-old custom-built. It's a, a rich era custom built, I would say. And uh, so it's pretty, it's recent relatively. But it's a nice shape, has a nice big bowl. Has really crisp rustication, that custom built routering. It's nice. I was mowing uh, <laughs> yesterday. The county hasn't gotten to our uh, roadsides yet with their mower, so, and they may not, who knows. They've had a lot of road projects. So, limited manpower, but uh, I have that old DR mower, so I'll take it and kind of clean up a little local park and then go up and down the road shoulders for a few blocks. And, uh, where the blackberries just reach out and grab you. But anyway, I'm out here at Big Valley, and it occurs to me that you really don't own anything. You know, uh, ownership is just code for uh, personal use, uh, it gives you the right to use something. You know, like out here, uh, I can pretty much do what I want to do with this property, within reason, you know, within legal limits. And I like that. That's something special. But I pay for that. And hopefully this property will appreciate. And
21, engine 22, engine 23, engine 71, tender, 21, tender, 22, tender, 23, tender, 84, minute 21, Adam, minute. So here's a little deer munching on some stuff. Yes, there you are. Not very scared. Good thing. So, yeah, we all got canceled from that call. That's good. So I'm going to head from here down to the boat. I just was at Costco after work. Picked up some little treats because the canoe journey is coming up next week. So I'm going to try starting the engine again. Uh, yesterday, Sunday, uh, my friend Jim, who's quite mechanical, he's actually mechanically fearless. See, there's a difference there. Um, a very admirable quality, if you ask me. Uh, we went down to the boat and he actually, leaving the high pressure fuel pump attached to the engine, actually pulled it apart and uh, made sure it was all cleaned out. There was a little gunk in one of those uh, injector nozzle pressurized thingies. So after that, when we bled it, we got some fuel all the way through, but it still wouldn't start. It's like, what the heck? So I don't know. Well, maybe it's the, there's a stop solenoid uh, that you cut off the fuel to the engine. But if you did that, there would be no fuel getting up to the injectors, right? I don't know. So anyway, his family motto is, uh, if it's broke, go ahead and take it apart because it's already broke. <laughs> and it's like, okay, that's, that's good. So, So we did, but it is kind of looking like I'm going to have to uh, put an outboard bracket on the transom and then borrow an outboard. That'll be the cheapest way. So tomorrow morning I'm going to go to the used marine store, see if I can't find a decent husky bracket that would work. And then Jim has a whole little herd of outboards, and so hopefully the Mercury 9.9 he's got runs. Um, I mean, I guess I could buy a new motor, oh, three grand, um, and then sell it afterwards. But, you know, you just take such a hit. So anyway, we'll try, we'll try that and see what happens. Um, <laughs> but the boat for me is a lot like a house in that it's sort of like a Frank Lloyd Wright house. You know, it's an unusual boat. It's a Freedom Cat Catch 28. Uh, there weren't that many of them made. I forget how many, like 50 of them or something. And it's a really quality boat, you know? Uh, and so it's kind of like a house in, or a piece of property in that you buy it and you can do with it what you want while you, while you choose to, while you want to. Uh, but it's the kind of boat that you just want to, it's worth throwing a little money at. So I'm going to see, uh, I anticipate what will happen is, uh, I'll get the outboard, I'll do the trip with the outboard, and then that'll give some breathing room, and maybe I can get somebody who's really familiar with those engines, uh, in there and take a look at it and diagnose the problem and get it going and maybe get a few more years out of it despite it being raw water cooled. I, yeah, I still remember, you know, 20 years ago when I bought the boat, the surveyor said, oh, yeah, you should immediately, I, who knows how long that'll last, maybe a year, you know, because it's raw water cooled. But those uh, two GMs were, and the three GMs, that whole series were heavily made so out of apparently pretty good quality iron so we'll see i'll try and get as much as i can out of it 
because replacing it is going to be a lot of money. So, but hmm. again, a first world problem. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, the cigar leaf stuff is good. He's good. Hmm. Yeah, see the swallows are coming out, going after the bugs. Come on out, guys. There's lots to eat. Occasionally an owl will cruise across the meadow. You don't even hear it. Hmm. Yeah, so owning something. I mean, I guess... Uh, you know, it gives you the right to do whatever you want with it. Like if I wanted to sink the boat, I could. But there's a responsibility too. And uh, that responsibility, I think, is to keep these quality items in pretty good repair and keep it moving and so somebody else in the future can enjoy it. You know, same with this property. Um, I won't live forever, certainly. and. Uh, who knows what its future is, but I want to take good care of it until that time comes and enjoy it, of course. So, yeah. I hear some morning doves calling. Now they stop, of course. Time to head to the boat before it gets dark. Kind of a pretty sunset down here at the boat. Isn't that grand? And I'm sure it was much nicer earlier. It's on its last legs. Ah, so here's the little boat. Sail covers totally need replacement. But she's a beauty. The bones are good. Still a little sunset left. That big dark cloud up there. to the bowl. Thank you Ahmad, that's that's good stuff. That's his own mix, so nice. The cigar leaf gives it some real body. The perique gives it a little spiciness maybe and uh, I don't know, the rest of it's just kind of in the middle there. That's nice. Yeah, I just love being on a boat. Isn't that weird? I'm from the Midwest, but I love a boat. Yeah, these custom belts are great smoking pipes. But most pipes are. Quite honestly, most pipes are. You know, you just have to uh, ream them out and make sure the the airway in the bit is good and not obstructed. Passes a pipe cleaner easily. <laughs> it's going to be a good smoker.
See now the trick is to find what gives you quality of life and do that as much as you can but also let that imbue everything else you do. Yeah, that's, I think that's the magic of living a, a good life. So, hopefully everybody's doing that. And not just trapped in your obligations and your financial commitments and your compliance with societal rules, spoken and unspoken. <laughs> 